Okay, in this video, we're going to apply factoring strategies to simplify rational expressions. So just a brief warm up, I, I want you to think about reducing fractions. Now, I'm going to remind you, maybe your, your fourth grade teacher showed you that you could write 9 over 36 as 9 times 1 over 9 times 4. 9 over 9 we know is 1, right? We can divide 9 by 9 and get 1. We don't typically write 1 here because in math we're lazy and we don't like to write 1s. But what this would say is 1 times 1 over 4. So instead of having that 1, we would just simplify that by calling it 1 over 4. And that's the way that we reduce fractions. Another example here, 24 over 18, we can write that as 6 times 4 over 6 times 3. And those two 6s, I've got 6 divided by 6, we end up with 4 over 3. So you're thinking, okay, what does this have to do with simplifying rational expressions? Well, very briefly, just a note on restrictions. Some of the problems you're going to see today uh, say state any restrictions on any variables. A restriction, this is a value that's considered invalid for an expression. So there's a couple examples of invalid values for expressions. I'm just going to show you one of them here. So think about 0 divided by 1. You take 0 and divide it, you get 0. Okay. However, many people don't know that you can't take 1 and divide it into 0 parts. Now think about it. If you have one pizza and you're going to divide it into no parts, you can't do that. You're not, you'd are not. you be destroying the pizza and matter cannot be created or destroyed. So when you type this into your calculator, 1 divided by 0, your calculator explodes in your face. It'll say error, error 2, or some sort of strange message. That's because you cannot divide by 0. All right, so a restriction, this is going to tell us the values that make that your calculator explode in your face. Let's do a couple examples here. So this one says, simplify the following rational expressions. State any restrictions on any variables. There's that word, restrictions. So let's take a peek. This first example here. I just have a note. It says your first step is to always factor first. Okay, so immediately you might look at this and say, there's nothing I can do. But if we factor, things become clear. So this is my original expression. I'm going to common factor out a 3x. So you can see that there's a 3x in common between these two terms, and I've done that here. I've got a 3x out front. If you're rusty on factoring strategies, I highly suggest checking out my three-part series on factoring. I've got a couple video tutorials on common factoring, trinomial factoring, difference of squares factoring, all the kinds of factoring that you would possibly need. Okay, so that's what I've done is I've common factored out this 3x. Now, you'll notice on the bottom, I have a negative 3x. Well, is it safe to say I can cancel these two terms? If your instinct is yes, you're correct. I can cancel these two terms, and you'll recall that it's because I'm multiplying 3x times this binomial. Okay, if I had 3x plus this binomial, I could not cancel those terms. So that's the, that's the strategy I'm going to use here. You can see I'm canceling out my two terms. Now, before we go any further, I just want to note that I'm saying x cannot equal 0 here. Okay, that's my restriction. You can see here, if x was 0, I would have... 0 on the bottom, and I cannot divide by 0. I just showed you that your calculator will blow up in your face if you do that, so be very careful. Make sure you state your restrictions as you go, and you're just going to kind of collect them at the end, and you'll, and you'll see that I do that here. So what I'm left with here is 3x minus 2, and I'm dividing by a negative. Now remember, there's still a negative 1 there. I could just call this negative 3x minus 2 over 1, or I could just call it negative 3x minus 2. I'm going to distribute that negative just to clean this up a little bit end up with negative 3x plus 2. Now notice I've said where x cannot equal 0. That is my restriction. It's very important to write that in your final answer. That tells us that this expression simplifies to this expression as long as x does not equal 0. All right, so let's look at part b here. Same situation. I want a common factor first. Okay, Most people are going to say, well, you know what? I can just take this y and cancel with this y. Remember, you cannot do that. You're breaking math rules here. Okay, I'd be crying. You'd have tears on your test. Okay, so we're not doing that. We are going to factor though. So I'm going to take a peek at the bottom and I'm going to say, you know what? I've got something in common between my two terms. There's definitely a y in common. Uh, and it turns out there's also a 5 in common. So I've, I'm going to common factor that 5y out. Now you can see that it's safe for me to cancel out those 5y terms. Right? I can cancel those out nicely. Right? And when I do that, you're going to see this happen. Right? Your, your y's are gone. I'm stating restrictions here because I'm noticing already there's a potential that the bottom could equal zero. If I put zero in, in for y, the entire denominator is zero. My expression explodes in my face, the world ends. I could also get another situation where I, if I substitute negative two over five, I would also have zero on the bottom. So just take a look at that and you'll see that 
if I put negative 2 over 5 here, I have 2 plus negative 2. Right? My 5s would cancel, and I have 0 on the bottom. So that's also a restriction. Now, when I cancel that 5y, another misconception is that there would be a 0 there. Remember, if you cancel something, there is a 1 there. So I've, I've still got this 1. I've, I've canceled out my 5y's, and I've stated my restrictions. A third example, same sort of thing here. Remember to factor first on top, we've got an x in common. On the bottom, we've got a 2 in common. Right, I so could common factor out that x and could common factor out that 2. You're going to be tempted to just sort of cancel these, these two expressions out in the brackets. That would be fine as long as they were the same expression, but they are not the same expression. There is a way I can make them the same expression, and that involves factoring out a negative. If you picture 6 minus x, if I just change those terms around and make it negative x plus 6, they're still not the same expression, but you can see that I could take this negative and I could factor it out of the brackets. And if I do that, I also have to take it out of this positive six. When I do that, I end up with a negative two on the outside. The expression inside is now x minus six, so I can cancel these guys out nicely. I'll also note that I stated my restriction here. X cannot be six. If, if x was six, I'd have zero on the bottom. My calculator explodes in my face and the world ends. Make sure you state your restrictions. So we could just say that this simplifies nicely to x over negative two, and that's really it for that example. There's definitely more complicated examples that you can see. This one in particular involves a difference of squares as well as a trinomial factoring. All right, so your first step's factoring. We're going to take the top and we're going to write it as x minus 3, x plus 3. Remember, we take the square root of each term, put it inside the brackets after an x with a minus and a plus. That's a difference of squares. The trinomial factor the bottom. Two numbers that add to get 2, multiply to get negative 15. You'll see those two numbers are negative 3 and 5. This is great because we've got multiplication on top and on the bottom. So we should be able to cancel things out nicely. X minus 3 over X minus 3 is 1. We're going to throw those in the garbage. But before we do that, let's state our restrictions. Right? You can see here, if the bottom here was negative 5 or 3, we've got an invalid value for our expression. So we just state those restrictions nicely. So this guy simplifies nicely to X plus 3 over X plus 5. Okay, one more quick example. This one's definitely more involved only because of the type of factoring involved. This is not a simple trinomial. This is what I call a tricky trinomial. There's a, there's a value in front of the x squared. Definitely take a look at one of my factoring videos on trinomial factoring. I've got a really awesome shortcut for this. I'm not gonna go over in immense detail here, but I will walk you through this problem. You're gonna factor the top. You end up with this expression. Uh, and if I do the same thing on the bottom, I end up with this expression. And I can cancel these guys out nicely. I can say 2x minus 1 on top cancels with 2x minus 1 on the bottom. But before I do so, I want to note that the bottom could be 0 if I substituted in a half. Right, 1 half times 2 minus 1 would be 0. I've got 0 on the bottom. Uh, if I substitute in negative 2 over 3 here, I would also have 0 on the bottom. So I just state my restrictions nicely before I get too carried away. Once these guys cancel, I've got a nice simplified expression.